congressman to be able to see this firsthand and get to actually tour the whole rig? Well, you know, we, we get many questions from our constituents, uh, as, as uh, Representative Gibbs said, um, concerning the safety, uh, public health, public safety of these uh, of these operations. Uh, but we hear uh, that uh, that we've been doing uh, fracking operations for over 60 years and uh, well over a million such operations, and we've never had one proven instance where it's contaminated the water. But I think our constituents expect us to get out there and, and, and validate that and make sure that, uh, that we put eyes on the target. And, and that's what we're doing here today. Yeah, we had uh, some good discussions here with the personnel for about an hour, talk about what they do and what the safety measures they take and the, and the redundancy to make sure that uh, the water aquifer and the environment is being protected. And so it's good to see that. I think it's good that we're out here and they know, you know people are looking over their shoulder too. I would, I would just add, you know, again, the constituents have their concerns, and that's one of the reasons it's good that myself and my colleagues are here. Um, the energy forum we had last night was also another part of it. We had that at Stark County, which uh, we brought in experts to talk about the, uh, you know, the environmental uh, side of this and, and how there have been no incidences of, uh, um, uh, no proven incidents of uh, contamination based on this well, these well structures. So those are the kind of things that I think add, not only coming out here and seeing it, getting the experts talking about it, having the open forums, and making sure that our constituents all understand what's really going on here and how important it is that uh, we make sure that not only we're environmentally safe, but how many jobs can be created by this uh, by this operation. That's right. Let's, let's talk about, you know, jobs just outside of harvesting the resource, uh, I think is an important aspect of this as well, because uh, what we saw here today and, and what many folks may not realize is there's a tremendous amount of, uh, of steel that's required to make the, uh, uh, the different components, the, the giant drill bits, the pipes that go down into the earth, uh, the casings that, uh, that, that protect the, uh, the water table from, from the oil and gas that's coming up. Um, uh, we've seen a resurgence of, uh, of manufacturing in Ohio, uh, particularly around the steel industry, especially up uh, in northeast Ohio, and uh, you know there are lots and lots of steel workers all along the Ohio River that's uh, that's ready to go to work. Uh, and and as this, the demand for these components gets uh, uh, larger and larger, uh, you're going to see job opportunities come more and more. Yeah, we're seeing expansion of steel production in Stark County, and Marine County, and the Youngstown area because of the shale play. It's a lot of technology. Was there anything else from last night's forum that had you concerned about the environmental safety of this? No, actually, uh, some of the people that came in with concerns, they had some questions. I believe those questions were answered. Now, um, I, th I think they were concerned they had more questions, and I think that's that's going to be the, the evolving process, that as questions come up, we need to make sure they're answered properly. But ultimately, uh, I think a lot of their concerns and questions were um, answered last night with some of the experts. Yeah, and you know, uh, I I can't speak for my colleagues, but I, I I think we're we're united in the idea that you know where public health and public safety and and national security are concerned, you know we're not we're not against regulations where those issues are are uh, valid concerns. We need common sense regulations, but but the regulations need to be based on science and fact, and not on scare tactics and political rhetoric and. And, uh, and, and campaign agendas. Uh, it needs to be based on what's right to protect the environment, to protect the public safety, and to go after the natural resources that we're blessed with. Uh, because uh, as, as, uh, as you've heard several of them say today, uh, by going after our natural resources, we can move America one step closer to energy independence. When you look at here in the state of Ohio, I think Ohio's done a very good job on, in Columbus on the regulatory side, the legislative side. Uh, there's a group that comes in and, and uh, from around the country, they look at what uh, Ohio has done as well as all these other states that are out there in production right now. You know, Ohio's gotten high marks. And again, as uh, Bill has already said, you know, we want to make sure that this is done safely. The folks here want to do it safely. And, uh, you know, I, I serving on Energy and Commerce in Washington, one of the things, you know, we have, uh, we have the EPA come in with the administrator and we have the Secretary of uh, of uh, energy come in, you know, we talk about the processes that we're using and we have not heard them say that after all the years this is being done, the way it's being done, that, uh, you know, we've got a problem. So, you know, but we do still want to make sure it's done right and, uh, you know, that's why we're here today. In, in fact, if, uh, if you look at the state of Ohio, uh, the, the state of Ohio has one of the most stellar records uh, of doing this kind of activity. They've been uh, 
Uh, the state has been regulating the oil and gas industry since 1965 um, and uh, is very, very engaged in the process and I think you've done a, a, an excellent job. I, so, yeah. I chair the Water Resources and Environment Subcommittee in the U.S. House. We've had hearings on, on this with fracking and water, of energy and commerce. And, uh, you know, it's great technology. It hasn't been in 60 years. There hasn't been one uh, uh, reported instance where fracking itself has contaminated water aquifer. And uh, obviously there's there's been problems incidental, but not from fracking. It's from poorly constructed wells and abandoned wells. And I think here in Ohio, we've done uh, Senate Bill 165, and I was still in the Senate, and they just did some more updates, more uh, regulation on, on this area, and uh, getting the abandoned well issue taken care of and making sure these wells are constructed right, cemented right, and sealed, uh, we can develop this resource. I think I think one of the things we heard last night that is Ohio has really become the the flagship for uh, well production and, and, and the standard. So it's good to see that uh, Ohio is leading the way. Um, and there was some discussion about that. And I think last night one of the experts even said Lisa, ja Lisa Jackson from um, the EPA has come out and said there have been no issues of leaks. So um, all of when you get the factual information, it's very important. That's why that forum last night was important. I think what we're seeing, though, is people, and, and some of the uh, people who were opposed to it came up to me, and I said, well, give me a factual piece of information. Give me something that I can look at, because that's the key. If, if, you're, un, if you're uncomfortable, then come up with the facts. And uh, I think what we heard last night was a lot of these things are not factual, you know, the issue. So we just have to keep looking at it, making sure we're environmentally safe, but at the same time remembering about jobs and the economy in Northeast Ohio and what this can mean to the steel industry, to uh, workers. I mean, it's just a great opportunity for all. Uh, when, you, when you step back and look at, uh, at America's legacy um, of, of technological uh, innovation, uh, if we were as risk averse uh, uh, in the 1800s and uh, 1900s as we are today, we wouldn't be driving cars, we would have never flown an airplane, and we certainly wouldn't have gone to the moon. Uh, you know, there's, there's very little that America has ever done that doesn't involve some degree of risk, but we've always managed to work through it safely, uh, protecting the environment, protecting human life, uh, and advancing America's uh, energy needs and national security needs. And I, I think we've got a good example here in Ohio of how that's being done. And I, I think, too, it also drives your economy. We have an energy supply that's reliable and affordable, and you'll see more than just steel jobs. You'll see manufacturing come back and other jobs because you know, when, the, when the energy supply is here, it's reliable and affordable. That will bring back those other sectors, and manufacturing is a big one, and they're a you know, big uh, user of energy. And uh, so I think you're going to see more of that. So more people will benefit than just the people in the industry, and they want the gas industry. Absolutely. I think our photographer arrived.